Your Excellency, Reverend Fathers and clergy and dear faithful, today is a feast, the Annunciation, a very beautiful and joyous feast. But upon this mystery and Our Lady's answer to the Archangel's question, so much depended, and it changed so much in this world, the angel's test, they say, was surrounding this mystery of the Incarnation when God told them, the angels, that God would become a man and that later the angels would then have to bend the knee in adoration to him. That is when Lucifer rebelled. He wouldn't have anything to do with worshiping a God-man. And he took with him so many of the other angels. But then there were the good ones, one of whom we honor today in the, the Annunciation, Saint Gabriel. Now, 4,000 years had gone by since the fall of Adam and Eve. Men were generation after generation becoming worse and worse, more sinful and more evil than the one before them. And so it could have been asked, because it was such an evil time, would God destroy the world because it was evil? Well, we know that he flooded it once to sort of start again. But at this time, God showed so much mercy and compassion that he would not destroy it, but renew it, fix it, fix what had been broken. Mary, the young maiden, the Blessed Virgin Mary, at this time was kneeling quietly in her home and she was praying. They say, many of them say she was praying some of the Psalms, perhaps showing that she wanted the Redeemer to come. And as she was praying, at that very moment in heaven, she didn't know it, but in heaven, there was a great commotion. One of the great angels, Gabriel, who had been faithful at the beginning, and said, I will adore the God-man, was called before the throne of God. And the Holy Trinity told him, you are to take a message. Here's the message, that she is to become the mother of God. And uh, you are to take this message to this one particular young lady in a very particular town called Nazareth. Go and take it to her. And so a, he was most willing and happy, Gabriel was, to take this message down to the maiden. And she came, he came in and Mary of Agreda says it was about six o'clock in the evening, just before dark. And he comes in quietly and she's all alone but she's wrapped in prayer she notices Gabriel and salutes him but he then salutes her bowing down low and says hail full of grace the very first Hail Mary ever said was said by an angel and he explained to Mary the mystery that she was to become the mother of God and uh, with humility, she said, as all of creation, you can picture this, all the angels, all men, all of creation just sort of waited, focused on this one scene in Nazareth, in this home. They all waited. What would Mary say? Would she say yes? Or would she say no to becoming God's holy mother? Fiat. Fiat miki secundum ver verbum tuum. Be it done unto me according to thy word. And then there was such joy in heaven. They say the angels who were witness to all of this from in heaven, they rejoiced. They praised God for such a, working such a mystery. And even the just on earth, which were very few at that time, they sensed something was different about it about this very night. 
they felt some sort of a, a joy, profound joy that they had never experienced before. And they wondered within themselves, it said, could it be that God has become flesh? That he has come to save us? The fathers in limbo experienced joy too. Imagine all of those great fathers, Abraham and, and uh, the rest of them, just waiting for the Redeemer. St. Michael descends into limbo to, to comfort them, to tell them, your time of waiting is almost done. Be patient. They say even that creation rejoiced on this day. The stars gave off a brighter light. The planets made their rotations much more quickly. The plants and the trees budded more beautifully and more fully than before. And even the birds sang a more beautiful song than they had ever sung before. For us, this feast is a great feast of joy. God has come. He has come to save us. Fear not. Fear not what is what the world makes us suffer. For God has come to save. One last thing before I go. We have this joy on this feast day because of our Blessed Mother, Blessed Virgin Mary. If she had said no to becoming the Mother of God, there would be no redemption. St. Thomas said that. There would be no Holy Eucharist. There would be no sacraments because our Lord gave us all of that. In your life, remember, Mary is so important to you and for your salvation that you must never let go of her hand. Every day, pray to her and pray sincerely. Love her more than you love anything else in this world because it is she that brought Jesus to earth and it is through her that we shall one day go into heaven where we can see Jesus himself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.